Hello there everyone and welcome back to episode 7 of us playing as the Enclave. And as you can see we're still at war with the good old Legion, but we gotta talk about med tech. Hello folks, this is Mr. New Vegas and a special guest appearance for the Radian Times. MedTech Labs has officially reopened its doors today and has begun production of a wide range of health and other medical products such as Mentats and Fixer. However, the new flagship product are Stimpaks, of which the patient was awarded to them for sale and distribution, but not exclusive rights after lobbying from several independent organizations. While the true manufacturers of Stimpaks might have been a company in North Carolina, no one's around to challenge that claim, and by the time of this article, several thousands have already been produced and sent to needy communities in the far reaches of American society. Questions on whether the medtech team will produce a various combat drug and stimulants that are also prevalent in today's society will decline, and with a spokeswoman stating that medtech is only interested in producing healthcare products and not trying to make a quick buck. That's the news, and now from a top selection of songs from across the waist. You can feel yourself getting healthier. Keep Continue powering everybody here. General Atomics. And then Watts. Yeah, I'll do too. Robco. The robots of Robco live to the waste and are often a hazard to many scavenger caravan guard alike. Ooh. And, sh and sending shutdown codes from rec uh, recognized source could save lives. Many more in a state disrepair and could have been boon scrappers and salvagers if there was a central system to repair at all. Um, and especially to refit and re uh, repair and refit. Ooh. Um, those are idea anyway with Robco. A recognizable pre war name that would not only be recognized, but it would also have legitimacy to a cause. Until Mr. House sent us, sent us a message claiming overlordship of this brand. After a series of legal debates and stare downs between Mr. House's Securitrons and U.S. Army Power Armor, House relented his ownership, but maintains the role in his company as an advisor and monetary consultant. Any other pre war mogul still alive? Oh, interesting. Purification stations, modified power stations, free repair. Gains a permanent 10% increase, increase in coring costs. Does that mean like political power coring costs or like electricity coring costs? Division tech and core territory, uh, population, wealth tech manufacturing, max factories in the state would be nice. Ooh, let's get this one. But still. So we're still trying to push through here and there in different locations and whatnot. It's taking some time. Okay. Oh, and they're still attacking here too. They just really want to kill themselves off, don't they? They really do. They love it. And we love it too, so. We just have no political power. Even though we'll get 2.75 a day, which is pretty decent, I'd say. Cybernetics? I think we'll start that. A little bit less factory output? Why not? Horses. Although there were about 6 million, or 8 million horses in pre war America, they all died out to the, due to the Great War. Uh, nuclear uh, winter and hungry survivors, of course. Now the EPA wants to use genetic engineering to revive horses and other large mammals rather than engineering death claws with lasers in their guns. Which, in my opinion, would be really cool. Great, now give them lasers. Hey, fantastic. Yeah, business California, uh, for Audling Sun, America's back, but for how long? How long to another great war? One of its kives are. Well, the same forces that brought down the NCR infect us. How do you prevent America from collapsing again? You know, that's a good question. Keep powering them all. But right now, what we have core is what we see on screen. So every night can ask, are nice. I do those two. Oh, drone. Can only have somebody in the defense drone line, which is good. Nice. Um, there. That fits it out. Just a little better. And... There you go. We're still fighting down here. My god. Circumference would be nice. Bear dropping would be pretty good to do as well. Um, it's not attacking us for now. General Atomics, with a fleet of robots, an army of workers. General Atomics has started work on restoring many of the still dilapidated areas of Dayglo, in Reno, and beyond. Both the President of the United States and the newly commissioned President of General Atomics has expressed great interest in restoring American great cities, or America's greatest cities, creating thousands of new jobs and providing a positive light of Mr. Handy model of robots, production of which is expected to return in the coming weeks, with personal units expected to be sold off once the construction is completed. A spokeswoman from General Times has stated all weapons and combat procedures from civilian models have been removed per safety request by several consumer protection of organizations. Building back progress. Build back progress, nice. Watts Electrics, ah, after Diablo Cannon Power, or for Solar Stockpile. Well, let's do this one. Naval Air Station Lemur. Private ownership was a cornerstone of American business pre war. While the Uncle said much of the infrastructure, power, heat, and cool homes across the waste has become a drain on the uh, administration whose efforts are better suited elsewhere. Today, in an official ceremony, the Department of Infrastructure and Public Works handed over control of much of the nation's power supply to Watts Electronics. 
Some criticized the privatization of national infrastructure, a Watt spokesperson or woman said. The company will offset costs through the production and sales of various energy weapons and other electronic devices that, while scarce today, were common in the 2100s. These include laser rafts, electronic lockpicks, and even radios for the wastelanders to enjoy. Lights are on, America. Further story at Beale Air Force Base, sitting in Northern California. Beale Air Force Base served as a wasteland, a westward home for the Air Force intelligence, and a fueling hub for the uh, for force movement towards China. An interesting mix. H&H &H hand tools. Ah, the GEC. Oxitalo. Yeah, I install a lot of police forces here still. Came to the grid. Oh, that's good. Nice. Cool. Tumble home. Yeah, good. Again, that score will be very good. Oh, uh, yeah. Expression technology is always pretty good to do as well. Logistics. North Passage, huh? You know, why not? We'll put it there. Saturn Energy, huh? Naval Academy Ventura, Naval Base. God dang, it takes forever to try to even get anything done. It's because we don't have enough planes. It's because we don't have enough military factories. Start working on those. Like crazy. Getting better, but still. Better bird ones are fine. Not by five, probably. Description is fine. Hello. Ah, the president today inaugurated the Southwest Commonwealth, made up of the Nevada Territories, the Mojave Wasteland, and the southern half of the former NCR. The event was held within the halls of Shady Sands. It has been designated as the Commonwealth new capital due to the facilities already present in the post-war city. It's considered a major win for the present and Commonwealth program, as many former NCR citizens and residents of the Nevada Territories were keen on keeping their land separate. The president assured that nothing will really change to the Commonwealth, aside the continued distribution of goods and services, and better coordination police and security organizations within the Commonwealth to combat raiders or mutated monsters. A new day, America. The Gunrunners were as a, a weapons uh, and manufacturer faction operating out of the fortress in the Boneyard. By today, it's branches in many areas, including one near the strip in the Mojave Wasteland. The Gunrunners supplies only the finest hardware to the most discerning customers, which used to include the NCR, of course. Most Gunrunners. Workshops are set up in areas that recently came under our control. I'm not sure if the new regime's review is the business, but they have ceased production temporarily. Many are making plans to leave and we'll do so unless we make our opinion of them clear soon. And to continue to operate? Recognize a legitimate business and allow it to continue operating as before. All those fine guns will be safe in our hands. Forcefully close the gun runners down, confiscate as much of their stock as possible. We don't need to do that. Let them operate. This is America. By God, this is America. Oh, reconstructing California. Please pardon the mess during the reconstruction. Better rebuilding Sacramento. Fate of the Boneyard. LA was one of the greatest cities of the world before the war, the place where dreams were made. Why can't we do it again? Mutant Menagerie. There's been reports of several groups of mutants making a trek to one of our pre war bases. The problem? It's Mariposa. Dealing with Eureka. H, H Tools Company. They're the build America back. America needs tools. One of the best products on the market was in the pre-war was H and H Tool Company. Well, we were keen to open the company up and distribute as many drills, nail guns, and auto axes as the production lines could put out when we were approached by Mr. House, his secure trunks, apparently. That his this is his company, not only by the fact that he bought it out from his strange half brother, but by birthright. After a small legal battle, what almost erupted into a fire fight between his secure trons and armored troops, he has relinquished ownership of the company only after making an odd request to have half his half brother's name redacted or erased entirely. We were too happy to oblige and already request are coming in from across the country. Is there anything this guy doesn't own? Wow. Cool. That'd be beneficial to get to. Hey, you got 2% of legitimacy too. What are we missing here? Oh, dogs. Oh, God. Better start making them, boys. Cool. A new Dayglow, huh? Hayes was born in Dayglow to an enclave loyalist who fled after Navarro. As such, he's got some great plans for some town. Helios, too. Uh, good afternoon, America. As your president, I want to tell you a great new plan. You might have heard of the solar pl panel plant outside New Vegas called Helios 1, but did you know there was one? it was only one of the series of plants intended to wean America off fossil fuels before the Great War? Alone, New Vegas, California, and Vault City could never have duplicated it, but 
working together. We are building Helios 2 outside of Dayglow as we speak to bring to bring clean, affordable energy to Southern California. It's a new day, America. Soak up the sun. Poseidon Energy. This one has a special place in the Enclave Star. Poseidon. Uh, it's oil rig was our home for so long as was Navarro. Well, it was Poseidon who shot at us in the storm of the Great War and where so many went down when it went up in nuclear flames, of course. <clears throat> Likewise, the Gecko Power Plant was built and run by Poseidon Energy pre-war. The restart of Poseidon Energy as the nation's main supplier of power through various nuclear and solar energy plants made many in the Enclave accuse others of cutting onions nearby. As it was for us through the Great War and beyond, Poseidon forms a very bagged rock of power within our nations that gives us power, along with the potential for a series of commercial refueling stations to once fix America's roads. Remember the rig. Wait, who's paying for the roads? America now and forever. The wasteland is littered with a proof America was destined to be to destruction with the path it was walking down. The Grand Harbor was in a unique position. He had the weight of the old world behind him and the lessons of the new world at his fingertips, and it's the foresight to keep America alive and well into the future. But Grand had to be careful. Many tried this before. Max and Tandy, Kaiser, all had tried and each failed in their own way. Maxon's ideals were perverted. Tandy's laws were overturned, and Kaiser's legion would crumble under his death. None of these fates would be the fates of America, not this time. Learning from their past and teaching them to do the next generation was not as words of a leader, but experiences to be remembered. America would go on, America would survive, that would be his legacy. We learn from the mistakes of the path. 2030s will be an American century. That seems like more fitting. Monsters of the East. Kaiser turned lead into gold and with what he did in Arizona. A juggernaut of a nation like a challenge of mind of the NCR, however. The legions follow Kaiser, not as ideas, remove Kaiser, and the legion crumbles. It's starting to look a little spread out here, huh? Nitrogen cooling, cool. Cybernetics are going. It's fine, whatever. I'm gonna do that. They're still not attacking down here, huh? Interesting. Fighters are looking better, at least. It's there looking better. Wounded, whatever. Let's get out of here. And. There we go. Can we actually fight these guys and do okay? I don't know. Maybe not. We continue to the line, then maybe. You know, I agree, Congress. The voice and representative body of the people, while the president at the helm, the body of Congress shall squabble and argue amongst themselves in a brilliant display of democracy. And this fancy casino we can re renovate to do just that. Hey. Eyes in the sky, actually. Leal Air Force Base served as both a refueling point uh, for forces moving towards China and a strategic reconnaissance base. It's going to make security paramount. <coughs> Excuse me. With little expense in the way of ensuring it was secure, which came back to bite us 200 years later. With all the base commander's authority, even a presidential access codes were useless. Forces and contingent from the army to sweep through the base and the many sealed facilities underneath the base were swarmed with the federal ghouls that led to further delays. Now the Air Force has given us the all clear, and is returning to this original mission 200 years later. <coughs> Excuse me. Since the reconstruction, that has become a home to uh, Air Force Intelligence Squadron, an Air Material Command, making it the largest Air Force installation in Northern California. Fan freaking fantastic. There goes good old glory. Caius Drusus, huh? This could be a giant problem for us. Could you guys do this? Yeah, maybe, yeah. The force on the defense too, huh? That's not good for us. But it's quite interesting to watch, not gonna lie. Beautiful. We're not even dismantling, we're just blowing them all up. I love it. It's pretty nice. Cool. That was actually way easier than I thought what would happen. Very nice. Bit of the bone yard. Let's see 
this too, anyways. We remember Navarro. Today the president addresses the somber formation outside the gates of the former Enclave, former Brotherhood of Steel, former NCR, now returned to Enclave base in Navarro. The memorial is dedicated to the brave men and women of the Enclave uh, who gave their lives defending the base against the combined NCR and uh, Brotherhood of Steel assault. Uh, allowing for the president and his team and, and special guest Command Sergeant Major Arch Dornan to escape to the Syria Armored Depot, allowing the American dream and the Enclave dream of restoring America to live on. The event was primarily attended by Enclave personnel from Sierra Armored Depot, although VIP attendees, including a few members from the reformed New Reno gangsters, the mayor of Dayglow, and some members of the followers of the apocalypse. Citizens are allowed access to the memorial at all times, but us, or the U.S. Army, engineer, Army engineers, have said the rest of the base is off limits due to security and integrity concerns after the base was nearly destroyed by the Brotherhood of Steel members during the NCR Brotherhood War. They may be gone, but they will never be forgotten. Hey! Civilian legitimacy. Perfect. You know what? I hate these guys. I really do. I could use these for the other front, but what around here? I hate Elko Posse. You know, dying hole. Your resort to Congress. Construction finished today on the new congressional building and other milestone for the President's Reno Initiative. While avoided by many for the haywire robotic security, government shutdown codes negated this fact and allowed construction to begin in earnest on one of the few well preserved constructions in all of New Reno. Befitting the grandeur of the American Congress, the resort was repaired to full working condition with the resort rooms turned over to offices and the large halls turned over to the reformed House of Representatives and Senate. Speaker of the House, Aaron Graham, uh, brought to session the House of Representatives to deliver the first set of laws, while Senate Majority Leader Jessica Rose began forming committees on how to deal with a myriad of problems facing the nation. The day ended with the House forming a new budget and the Senate opining to form a new exploratory committee on how to deal with the various wastes and nations who lay claim to the U.S. soil, only in America. Self-repair protocols. Robots can easily be damaged in combat, but repairs are often far away, and sending in a repair team in combat defeats the purpose of automated warfare. Have support robots companies to do it will keep them in fight just enough to finish it and return to base. Ooh. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna have you guys come down here. So where are we at for armor? Uh, that's okay for now. Keep, keep, keep making my abilities. Nice. I'm a little bit. Oh, actually, they finally won their war, huh? Wow. At this point, just do this. Concentrate here. Kill them all. Irrigate California. Before the Great War, California was America's gardens. The destruction of the nation's irrigation system I meant that much of that is gone, but the United States can rebuild it. Absolutely. Self repair roads, yeah. Robotics uh, Corps. I like robots to get the job done. They don't complain, and when they can break, I can repair them within minutes and send them back into the fight. Let's see what a human can do. That. Colonel Mary Orwich, Robotics Corps. Nice. Go. Fight and win. Whispers of hope. Due to our effort to rebuild this once great nation, every day there are more who believe in our American dream, of course. Whispers of a new dawn spread across the radio waves and in the bars and homes. Whispers of a president who can sway even his better enemies with words and, and his uncorruptible soul. Yeah, that'd be good. Lockheed Aeronautics. Oh yeah, that'd be good. West Tech. Naval Academy of Ventura Naval Base. Uh, the Navy today finally completed the construction of its new main academy building on the Ventura Naval Base today. Oh, we need more uh, weekly stability too. Or, or support. Whoops. Did I do the war support? That's stability. Crap, I need more army XP. Um, Douglas Grant was there at the ribbon cutting ceremony, as well as giving a speech to both freshman cadets and the hardworking men and women who helped build the new cathedral like building overlooking the Pacific Ocean. America's going to need its Navy in the future. When we retake our continent, it'll be the Navy will punish over the horizon to the world beyond, to places like Europe, Africa, and the lost continent of Australia. We'll be part of that future, pushing boldly over the horizon to parts unknown, carrying with you the spirit of liberty and the fires of freedom, representing the world America's here at uh, home. Good luck and God bless America. Eventually, we'll get Annapolis. Wow, plus level three. Holy crap. We're just grinding out for it. Where 
we have for this. It's getting slightly better every time. All right, so let's start focusing on our Air Force more. Clear the skies. Um, oh, there's that. Uh, Vertebras once flew on challenge across the skies, but times have changed since 2241. The gift of flight is the blessed wasteland. The Air Force will have to work to retain her mastery over the heavens. Of course. Strategic Air Command. Well, pre war the Air Force operated nuclear capable bombers around the clock, ready to strike China if needed. Many of these planes never returned during the Great War. We should honor the legacy, though. Absolutely. Hello, America. This is your president speaking. Do you remember airplanes or jet planes? <clears throat> uh, uh, maybe some remember the sight of the vertebrates flying across the skies when the Enclave first returned to America's shores. I'm very sure a uh, few do. And I'm even sh sure fewer even know what that America was the birthplace of flight. Yeah, right here in America, the Wright brothers took their Wright flyer and for the first time succeeded in heavier than air flight. Of course, with the Great War, it was though. The, those days were long gone, but what if I told you that the U.S. government is sponsored a school in Daglo at the old Lockheed Aeronautics Advanced Development Center, also known as Skunk Works. Lockheed is accepting anyone with a knowledge of mechanical and technical know-how to train the next generation of American flight engineers for free. Food and housing are available on site, and family accommodations can be arranged. Soon, America, we shall return to the skies above just as before. Take flight, America. That's going to help us out slightly more, too. Love it. San Francisco Mint. With the early introduction of the U.S. dollar, many have been scavenging around pre-war side for a hidden stacks of greenbacks. The ones useless. Federal Reserve notes now seeing use once again. However, we can't rely on the pre-war notes forever, and it'll only be a matter of time before some country counterfeits them, or should we have just what we need to create? A new series of U.S. dollars right here in San Francisco. The U.S. state mint branch offices in the city is largely ignored by scavengers and the Xi due to low amounts of supplies. High security and uselessness of the dollars inside now, the process of returning to life once more as a new era of U.S. dollar enters post-war era. Is there a bell I can put my face on? Yeah, we're still pushing through, you know. Good. It is a grind fest against these guys. My god. More spark, please. Thank you. Doris, huh? How much manpower does the Legion actually have left? Clean the skies. Oh, they're out. Oh, that's good. I feel like press the advantage then. During the Great War, the United States Air Force was left on challenge as the masters of the air. Shooting down dozens of Chinese bombers as they tried to attack the mainland from the bases in Alaska, as well as dominating the skies over China. It was only when the Chinese stealth technology was placed aboard the planes was the Air Force left scrambling for an answer. Today, however, there's no Chinese stealth fighters, just a series of power gliders and the occasional prop monoplane. In the development of legions, Seattle don't find the pilots of the Air Force as they take to the skies once more, ready to defend liberty in the wings of freedom. Godspeed, pilots. Oh, air. Centralized force meant to provide air combat forces to our various operations across the North American continent, as well as training and equipping them in peacetime or breaks between operations. Rolling Thunder is nice and all, but we have to go with danger close. So the risk. Common trick used by many wastelanders to get up and close with their forces to avoid devastating airstrikes. What they don't realize is they'll drop ordnance right on top of us. Air Force of Tomorrow. No longer just an assortment of vertebrate birds and small support crews. The Air Force has thousands of pilots, uh, air crew, mechanics, support staff that will defend America's skies today, tomorrow, and beyond. West Tech. Perhaps you know the pre war cooperation had an effect on the post war world like West Tech. Yeah, we're actually doing it all right now. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're actually pushing really hard now. All right, we're going in then. Many know them for having created power armor, which dominated the waste like no other. Very few did any, though they were also responsible for the Force Evolutionary Virus. they good. Those are also West Tech's products, and they saw the wasteland devolve into the Masters, twisted vision of unity, and what saved it was a form of T-51B suits. While I've effectively managed to bury West Tech's involvement with FEV, we've restarted the company as the largest producer uh, <clears throat> of power armor in America, taking some other load off of our own military production lines and allowing limited sales to civilian users, such as on ships, police forces, or in the more remote areas of the country. Made in the USA. And flippin' frickin' tastic. Alright, we're gonna commit now. Hey, nice. We're gonna need you to commit. To commit. Oh my god, the entire time. You guys are okay, but you guys are not. Got the doggos. Airplanes? Well, I'll just try to max them out, I guess. Be 
give more range. It's a little less reliable, that's alright. Oh, we're really hurting for that, all that stuff, aren't we? Cybernetic implants, nice. Good. We love implants. No red, huh? Four time draft, it's time to conscript the peoples of America to protect your nation and its interests. Uh, so, what are you going to do? Then? First, last, and only line of defense. That goes to Anchorage. Unyielding firepower, division defense, liberty posts, chase doctrine. Well, we've got to be offensive here. Power projection. Air, which I do like air stuff. I do want to do more pair dropping. I might do this one. Shock and all. This one's pretty good. Sherman doctrine. Yeah, I want to do more pair dropping, but it's just not working for us right now. Division attack. I think I'll save this one for later. I like this one the most. The MacArthur Doctrine, but power projection. If we're to recover this continent, the army should be ready to deploy anywhere at a moment's notice. Be it the Mojave, uh, Mount Desert Island, and Maine. No raider, no war boss, and no tyrant be outside America's reach. Airborne school. Contrary to popular belief, airborne no longer uses parachutes. Instead, we make extensive use of jetpacks. Sergeant Major Eddie R. Fox. Nice. Supping with the devil. Against all odds, the United States Air Force has turned the tide against. The Legion to march to liberate the people's held in bondage. But Santa Ana is no fool, and he knows he cannot face the power of the United States of America. He has already supported legions of war efforts, providing men and material to bolster the Legion's forces. Although Mighty Kaiser is nothing but contempt for robot army, then he says counsel, and that it's better to lose a neighbor to robots than your own soldiers prevails. Once more, the general marches north to snuff out the cause of freedom. You beat him once before, we'll do it again. Although Santa Ana is now marching north, perhaps it's time to formally reach out to the people of Mexico. I'm out of honor, 200 years in the making for that. Cool. In a ceremony honoring a true American hero today, the President has awarded the highly prestigious Medal of Honor to one of its most courageous soldiers. Corporal Adi Dobbs, the pre-war survivor found in stasis in the Sierra Army Depot, is credited with saving the town of Golden Valley from a dastardly Legion attack, saving countless American lives. The citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and trepidity, at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty in his role as a power-armored infantry man with four elements of the U.S. Army, while engaging in urban combat against those forces of Khazar's Legion, Corporal Adi Dobbs demonstrated extraordinary heroism in the face of grave danger. Corporal Dobbs discovered members of Khazar's Legion attempting to detonate a dirty bomb within a parking garage, which would undoubtedly destroy the town of Golden Valley and the American forces living there. Corporal Dobbs single-handedly took on five centurions, three Praetorian guards, and numerous legionnaires whilst awaiting backup, preventing the destruction of the town by his selflessness and selfless courage, extraordinary devotion, above and beyond the call of duty. Corporal Dobbs has reflects great credit upon himself, the nation, and help held the highest traditions of the United States Army. It's my honor to award this to a true American hero. Absolutely. City of Angels. The Boneyard seems like a graveyard that stretches for miles under the hot sun, but Americans find a way. And the Boneyard has prospered as part of the NCR. Hayes and Senate set up as a department of public art and entertainment in the city. It serves as a nucleus of America's entertainment industry. But as part of that development, we need to decide what to change the city's name. Welcome to Los Angeles. It's been called the Boneyard for 200 years. The city of Angels. For those who didn't make it and those who kept trying to. Well, we're America, so we're going back to LA. Or this one. Yeah, we'll do that one. Seems like the most forgiving path. Now we're doing all right. They're actually losing a few divisions. Keep 45D power armor is nice and all, but still. Still ahead of time, still ahead of time, still ahead of time. Robots, of course. Alright, that's fine. Do that one. Hey, printers are nice. Printers are good. Good. Joel Warren, Enclave Strategy were born. While normally 400 years old events are trivial in the modern 23rd century, there are exceptions. In 1865, General, General Sherman drove home the point of war to the treacherous Confederacy by driving them deep into the traitor's heartland, burning the city of Atlanta before marching to the sea and presenting the city of Savannah as a president to Lincoln at Christmas. We can take that same drive and apply to our old tactic of vertebrate assault, doing a new doctrine of mobile warfare that the wasteland is not ready to prepare for. These missions are high risk, high reward, with long range of pair drop attacks and daring offenses across the wasteland and to disrupt and destroy enemy lines. It'll be risky, but if we pull it off, no enemy, be, no enemy will be able to withstand us. Imagine Sherman had vertebrates, or power armor for that matter. Nice. Fight school. 
Open the doors of America's newest fly school, drive recruitment. Who doesn't want to fly? Beautiful, man. Fences are online. Good. It's gonna take forever to get break through there, but that's alright. Kind of envisioned that. Uh Vandenberg Air Force Base. I got this one instead. The Legion can't handle American free. Legion forces have continually attacked American fighting positions all across the front line, only to find themselves climbing over a mountain of their own dead, just to face death at the hands of the American soldiers, armed with laser rifles, and supported by a mighty Air Force. Despite all the warnings given about the effectiveness of the Legion, the United States has held the line against the red tide of Arizona and pushed them back into their own lands, forward now into New Mexico. Beautiful. Look at all these guys we got here. Great. Don't let up. The Air Force today, tomorrow, and forever. When the Uncle Air Force returned to the shores of America, they only had bird birds as workhorses. Or, or, as a workhorse. With a Sierra Armored Depot. Uh, or a Sierra Uncle Air Top of the answer, we'd prop planes and we're ready to bring the fight to the bear from above. Now, we're prepared to have fighter jets scramble into the air as we begin our march east. Who knows what technology we'll have tomorrow as the president prepared to give a ceremonial pitch of the baseball game, a flight of the Air Force's most advanced aircraft flew overhead. Trailing red, white, and blue smoke to the cheers of everyone at the game. The band even struck up the national anthem for a second time as the president smiled and looked up. Fine, I fly over the baseball games. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I'll go to the awareness, why not? You're gonna need that. Yeah, start pushing through here, start pushing through here. I mean, it's hard to get rid of 32 divisions, roughly. Good, look at all those guys. Here to die. And die they will. They, that's a lot of death. I love it. Is it not pushing down this way? Oh, look at that! We found another fleet! And sunk. Beautiful. 107,000, nice. I wonder. Oh. Didn't realize it got caught. Nice. Nice, there you go. So now, it's still red, but it's all in one area. It's 1500 is quite a bit. We don't have that many planes, unfortunately. Fall Flagstaff. The city of Flagstaff, along with the seat of Kaiser's absolute power, fell late last night of the United States Army. Although Kaiser had stayed at the command and defense until defeat was all but certain, even his military wisdom could not save the city, surrounded as it was by the United States earlier pincer movements. In his infinite wisdom, Kaiser ordered a last stand, commanding his elite Praetorian Guard to fire on any units that attempted to desert. Ultimately, that order only served to delay the capture of the city, at large by day. Although even now, sporadic fighting continues, even between invading forces and Praetorian Guard units holding up in buildings. Kaiser's palace also appears to be still holding out, although this might surely change when the United States demolition team gets into position. How does the Legion have this many slaves? Shock and awe. Our tried and tested tactic is American as apple pie or tato, tato soup. Tato soup. Overwhelming firepower and immense displays of force will be brought to bear. The enemy will fight to, to will be sapped when the tribal warband is suddenly faced with hundreds of troops and power and dozens of tanks on the field. Thunder Run. Upon seizing the initiative, our forces will push through an opening in enemy lines, aiming for the headquarters, supply depots, and logistical nodes. Elves will make for far off objectives as the enemy's force fall back into disarray. Death from above. Whether our enemy can cower in the trenches, expecting us to come over the horizon, or we'll instead of bringing an aerial assault that brings an immense smashing force downward over our opponents. Break their tactics. Uh, once an enemy line is pierced, we must exploit this opening. What's more, continued attempts to break an enemy line and send them into retreat should be encouraged among our forces. Sh the Sherman Doctrine. Sherman's march to sea broke the back of the Confederacy during the Civil War. By modernizing his tactics, we can replicate his success across the battlefield, pushing deep into the heart of the enemy, and destroying the will and ability to fight. Pathfinders, vertebrate combat units. Ooh, yes, please. Even more breakthrough, I love it. Do you need to power them all? Uh, further restore naval air station in Lemoore, one of the two master jet bases on the west coast. Uh, NAS Lemoore offers repair and refit facilities for America's jet fighters, housing for their families, and a point to launch air control operations over California and the Pacific. 
Blacks have liberty. Better birds sweep overhead as enclave soldiers trample the legion's banners. The city slaves await to learn whether they found freedom or a new master, but the president can be proud to know that for the first time in 200 years, the stars of the flies over Arizona. Six and Patranus. Just make it even easier to beat them up. We're actually doing really well here too now. Good war tools. At this point, they literally just cannot resist. Oh crap! Every place has one just in case. We got a core eventually. Oh, good God! And even parts here too. We will. And then we got about some serious roads up. Power them. Economy, real programming from a political power. Hey, new assistance care package. Why not? Bosses. Two hundred divisions left. It's good. Yeah, Air Force is not very good. And run. Helps us out death from above. Anything else on this side we can do? Uh, the Department of the Navy. Even before the oil rig fell, well, the Enclave didn't have much in terms of a navy. Uh, but now that we've access to deep rivers in the ocean again, perhaps we should revive the Great White Fleet. Army Reserves. Yeah. Americans of the Great War rallied of the flag when the nation was under attack, serving as part time soldiers. They could do so again, of course. Keeps firing, which I'm okay with, but still. How much vampire does Tucson have left, too? None. 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 Fantastic. There you go. Hey, you took both, huh? Way more composite materials, though. Pathfinders. One of the biggest challenges of airborne warfare is maintaining cohesion and initiative in battle. In the post Great War battlefields of America, our vertical assault force will be sent far ahead of an advance and expected to fight in terrain, where the enemy likely has been there for decades, and any information we have on it might come from old world tourist maps. Of course, Army Solution. Pathfinders. These units will be sent ahead of the main force, designated landing zones and scouting enemy lines, allowing for the main force to arrive and take the initiative in the battle. To do this, we've modified several VV-01Bs with extra armor and equipment, giving them a new designation, and we've already produced a few hundred units. First and last out, motto of the U.S. Army Pathfinder School. Cool. Guardians of the Pacific. Once Southwest Master Jet Base of the United States Navy, the automated security system for one of America's most important installations in the Southwest has kept the facility relatively intact from various prospectors and scavengers. Now the base is returning for full operation stats once again. A particular boon to us was the facilities for aircraft repair, allowing our pilots a better chance to train without the risk of damaging precious aircraft as they can be repaired relatively instantly. Fly, Eagles, fly. AFN News, the Legion sent packing. Legion forces have been thrown into disarray following a series of attacks by the U.S. by Army forces supported by the Air Force. Typical Legion columns, normally used to marching unopposed through their lands, have been forced to move at night to avoid being bombed by bits by patrolling American aircraft. Air Force commanders are hoping to find and use a new night and thermal vision place some vertebrates and attack aircraft will further disrupt the legion movement and scattering them like roaches. Army forces, meanwhile, continue to push further east and have reported that some legion units are starting to surrender, with more than one of the centurions strung up from the telephone poles. Analysts say this is a sign that the legion's mythos is starting to break. Show them reds what's coming to them. Are death clouds an endangered species? With the revival of the EPA, one of the more vocal debates is whether North America's last, latest apex predator, the death claw, is entitled to protection. Well, it's a terrible threat. The deployment of heavy weaponry has reduced its natural habitat, and some scientists estimate that it could one day become extinct. We can preserve this proud animal as testament to nature's fortitude through diversity. On the other hand, farmers complain that death claws make off with Brahmin and children. It's alright. You can always make more Brahmin and children, so. The death claw like the bald eagle symbolizes America. Wait, are you kidding me? Shoot them all? Oh, uh, we need the war sport. But we're here to preserve the past and the future, too. It symbolizes America. Also, you can see, uh, we've got quite an instrument here, too. Which is fantastic. So, 
Very nice, very nice, very nice. Three roads and now the capital. What a shame. How far they've fallen. An absolute shame. Ooh. Three more convoys sunk. Very nice. And, oh, I guess we got Echo Posse. I did uh, pair drop into here. And I think I pair drop even including into its capital, too. So, yep, looks like we did. Oh, or maybe we didn't. Oh, the infantry pushed hard enough that they actually did it without us. Interesting. <clears throat> hmm. Four ways, huh? Hmm. How about O'Brien? There you go. Nuclear Defense Operations Command. Pre war, what has become known as the Devile's home of the Ballistic Defense Division, Southwest Operations Command of the Commonwealth Ballistic Administration. A mouthful of there ever was one. Suffice to say, we aren't expecting to be nuked anytime soon unless it's ourselves. Instead, the base had the locations of several of our nuclear sil silos that across the United States, several which were automated to build more nuclear missiles. We cannot begin to stress the danger uh, of these weapons falling into enemy hands. While we can answer the nuclear question later, we need to make it a priority to collect and recover nuclear weapons across the continent before it's too late. But to do that, we need a base of operations. <clears throat> and that base is the old Ballistic Defense Division Operations Center in Hopeville. Since we've returned to the base, we've been hard at work getting ready to resume operations once more. However, resources are starting to run dry or short for the time being due to the construction project, and now for we have only the resources to complete one project. Ah, getting, focus on getting Hopewell in mind. Uh, I usually do Hopewell. I think I think usually do Hopewell. Let's do Ashton. Uh, what else we got around here? Arsenal Democracy. Free War America with a military industrial powerhouse, so power on fall in fact to end of the world. We can reignite the fires of liberty's industry and bring the light of the old world to the wasteland. Or restrain it to prevent another collapse. Or apocalypse. Ashton Air Force Base. Ashton Air Force Base was the Air Force component of the, component of the Commonwealth Ballistic Defense Complex. Tasked with providing targeting and launch data for the missiles on the base as well as maintaining the base with what is technically an unstable region. The base remains in better shape than the Army side, largely due to the more technical side of the Air Force operations having greater security. Thankfully, no one managed to activate the launch sequences, so that might have caused some problems. As that might have caused some problems. We don't know exactly what our predecessors were thinking when they built a missile base near the San Andreas Fall. However, records show that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers installed a series of seismic sensors around the base. I think I heard this before. If they tripped, then the base would lock down and ensure that no base da missile was damaged. Apparently, this backfired as the sensors couldn't differentiate between the nuke city in California and Nevada and an earthquake. Thus, the base went into lockdown and never launched a deadly payload. We're sure China was very thankful. Regardless, the nuclear bombs hadn't ironically enough stabilized the region. Well, that doesn't mean we won't be restoring the seismic monitors just in case. Curiously, we've noticed that there seems to be some residual seismic activity coming from below. It might just be old systems. I'll just keep you informed, though. Good to see it back in order. You know, good to see that, too. Region has 137 divisions left. Very nice. North Phoenix is still putting up some resistance, but not for long. Just keep shooting. When you're done, shoot some more. Ah, look at that. Lost the driving. We actually lost the capital ship. Look at that. It always helps if your enemies cannot fire back because they ran out of men. So Com says the war against the Legion has begun. Looks like the campaign is coming to a close, and we're going out with a bang. Yeah, but we still got uh, Washington brother to deal with. We've got uh, Troll War to deal with. You know the good stuff. Find him and kill him. That's all I have to do. Find and kill. Advanced recycling. Very good. Neural interface. Nice. Less factory output, more HP. Less factory output, more reinforcement. Let's get more HP first. Even though we don't really need the HP, but whatever. North Phoenix has fallen. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Where are you guys at? Nice. You can help out down here. Sabata's looking kind of thick. Port Freedom. Nice. There you go. Army Reserves. Now I'll get that one next one out. Oh, this one next. The Department of the Navy. Free war of America was known as arsenal of democracy, and its industrial capacity was unrivaled. Even the Chinese Communists couldn't hope to meet. Oh, look at this. Um, 
the output of the United States during the war, and it was only the Great War that brought the end. Even today, the surviving husks of the pre-war era are still looked to with by envy with every supposed pre-war industrialist. If we're going to establish such power, the way someone have nothing to stand against us as we produce weapons and armor by the thousands while they're produced only in the tens. Old world corporations like Grobko, Westec are meeting alongside new startups like the Van Grass and Tim Tanks. Of course, there's the fact that these also very corporations that drove riots at home and sent up the world into a death spiral. Alongside the communists, long ago the United States military made everything in-house. And they can do so again, though it would be sacrificing all when compared to what we, we, we would be doing. The debate among the military commanders is reaching a fever pitch, but the, and the president's words have more than us sway. Let's not let the world on fire again. Straight to the new world, let us let the fires of the old. I like the one on the left, I think, more. Overall. Forges, huh? Three smokies. Oh, the old world. I think I like... I'll do this one. When I do purest route. When I do purest route? When I do the purest route. Because the old world stuff makes more sense. So, strength for the new world. The power is so great to destroy the old world. It must ensure that the industrial might be under military is contained so the greed and profit specter of the old world can no longer haunt the new. Lessons of the Enclave. After the war, the Enclave was forced to develop a robust and in-house weapons development and production center. What does make it uneasy? Make us uneasy. We can use Richardson's lessons for our own purposes. And another Adventist. The United States has all but decimated the Legion, with many units fighting more from fear for a reprisal of Legion commanders than belief in the so-called God of a leader. While many Legion commanders still hold large forces under the command, it would take a miracle for the Legion to recover from losses given to them from the army. More reports of Legion corps killing their own commanders and surrendering or coming from the front line, forcing the army to make several ad hoc prisoner of war camps in the desert. Despite some criticism, the power of the Apocalypse was moving into captured Legion areas to attend to the wounded Legionnaires, as well as provide basic needs like food and shelter. When asked for comment, our army commanders agreed to better let the followers do it, allowing more ships to be able to fight on the front line rather than pull guard duty, like they ever stood a chance. Fi Firefighting Phoenix. Dakota Cannon reported reporting in on the streets of Phoenix. United States troops have pushed the Legion back to the outskirts of Phoenix. Well, wait, we have some breaking news. Reports coming in from a slave rebellion in Phoenix. Apparently, Aurelius of Phoenix feared the Legion setback would trigger a slave rebellion, and other city of slaves executed. Unfortunately for Aurelius, his brutality ended up triggering the rebellion itself. Talk about a self-fulfilling prophecy. United States Air Force is planning to airdrop supplies and weapons to help the ex-slaves. Oh, keep fighting the good fight, everyone. Legion is the very definition of failure. Hey, get cores and war support. Hey, we have 4% war support. And there's also his downfall. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we've done very well. It's been a pain in the took us to get all the way here, but we've done very, very well. And we actually have green air in some places, too. Go figure, huh? For now. Provision Republic of Texas. That is a huge Texas. Massive. Absolutely massive. Mutant Menagerie, huh? As we have we didn't have enough problems on our hands, it seems that the super mutants mistook our kindness for weakness. What few remained in flee north of the war, east of Congregate and North Diablo Range, near the old Mariposa military base, uh, which anyone with a hint of historical knowledge knows that what exactly was born there, and what is still buried underneath it. The brother and the NCR closed the base off against anyone who dared enter, however, too overstretched dealing with the collapse of the NCR proposed these kinds of numbers. We had hoped to ignore and pretend it didn't exist, but we're getting reports of super mutants stealing livestock and raiding caravans. It's only a matter of time before they start abducting waste centers and raiding the outlying towns. Maybe accepting them was a mistake. We need some capital ships here, too. Nice, that's good. Scaretrons are nice. Oh, is this an upgrade or something? Oh, did the Legion just collapse? Yeah, nice. Three eight one 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 hundred. Three eight eight hundred max speed. Twenty five armor. Ninety percent revived. Yeah, I'll make a line of them too, why not? Up to three there. Start gunships. Caravans because you can. No. Oh, do they go to war with us too now? Or are they called. We're called an it's an ally. Okay, whatever. 
Don't really care. Um, Minutemen. A lot of stuff doesn't even matter now. So. I guess. Ah, we can use more of this stuff too. It's fine. Cool. So, who are we fighting now? Antidosol, Iron Alliance. This guy's here. And when you're done, you do that. When you're done. Mutant Mecca. Scraping together a mix of army volunteers, mercenaries, caravan guards, and local militia, we surrounded the super mutant ho hovel at Mariposa. They barricaded themselves in, and some of the less intelligent ones had taken pot shots at us and were on alert for night operations at night. The super intelligent super mutants. The intelligent super mutants are willing to negotiate, and claiming they just want honest, peaceful town where super mutants can live free of persecution and oppression. Collapse of Hunter del Sol and the Battle of Denver. This is Arnie Williams with the AFN. The United States forces have secured Denver, formerly known as Dog City. Much of the battle is as much against the Khazar's Legion as it was against the hundreds of thousands of dogs that roam the streets of the city. The great treasure of the Rockies has been secured, but the pockets of all dogs remain, including deadly police cyber dogs. The United States forces have resorted to using heavy machine guns and flamers to rob the packs, and the smell of burning dogs can be smelled for miles outside the city. The city's ours. The collapse of the Hunter del Sol. Hugo Anderson from AFN here in Mexico. The United States troops have reported ent entered Hunter City, capital of Hunter del Sol. Fierce urban fighting is reported as defenders fight desperately to postpone the capture of the capital against the crushing advance in other news. Several members of the Aquila and Palat time have been captured by the U.S. patrol while trying to flee, to flee the Mexican city. Preliminary interrogation revealed that they were attached to the Henta developing a nuclear bomb for use against Nerino. This capture could help uncover the secrets of the shadowy organization, responsible for the Legion's technological progress. I'm sure they'll enjoy Callahan's company. Nice. Very nice. We're sending someone in to negotiate. We're reluctant as he is. Marcus has answered a request to negotiate on our behalf. That turns out a good will towards super mutants, earned his respect, and something that doesn't happen off to, off to often, he says. Driving from his home to Jacobstown, Marcus has effectively returned to the birth of his place, being led in with a small delegation of our own. The terms of the negotiation are we cannot know what we're talking about until a deal is reached and they won't shoot at us, which is all the same because volunteers for storming the base just keep arriving by the dozens every hour. So they'll come to a deal. Perform DARPA. War was largely privatized to <coughs> cut costs. Many of America's greatest military innovations came out of the Defense Advanced Research and Projects Agency. Taking the old science division, we could recruit DARPA and focus our efforts to suit our military needs. The Defense Institute of Technology. From the microwave to stem packs, the various technologies we developed for national defense can be moved to the civilian market and the new Defense Institute of Technology or work with civilian organizations to better accommodate this transfer of tactical and to practical. Freedom Foundries. The Army once made everything it ever needed. Weapons, artillery, uniforms, and it'll do so again. But well, we can still going. We can once again build a new and better Army for the new world. Army Arsenals. Army Arsenals shall be retooled and restored to produce our military hardware. Each arsenal will be its own factory and will also have command of other factories in the surrounding area. Army Corps of Engineers. The Army Corps of Engineers will begin working on redesigning and enhancing the various military factories around the country, or what's left of it anyways. Uh, Army Procurement Command. A board of ranking Army officials whose sole mission is to ensure that our troops have the best equipment possible and that it's being built to the highest quality in naval yards. In order to claim the facilities from pirates and whatever else comes our way, the Navy needs its yard to be at the top of the line, and not the way some shacks have passed the shipyards nowadays. A deal has been struck. After several days of negotiations, <clears throat> Marcus and our team emerge announcing a deal has been struck. The super mutants have agreed to stop raiding the local ranches and caravans for regular shipments of Brahmin and Bighorners. Several of the more intelligent uh, ones have proposed they could herd the livestock themselves, and for cheaper than the Brahmin, barons could uh, still hold a grip in Northern California. They would chase down eat raiders and NCR rebels for a price. Finally, some of the more aggressive elements of the super mutants have agreed to fight as auxiliaries within our armed forces. Given the net intelligence and aggressiveness of most West centers, we're not expecting much of an issue in integrating them into the army. We've got them on our side, good enough. Echoes of something, or her again or something. Nice. Uh, I'm going to isolate you just real quick. Let's go do this. Oh, y'all. There you go.
Captain New Navajo. Medic reports that Vander New Navajo had better street by street fighting, wrecking the Havoc in the city. Uh, the advance was made difficult by the Navajo sniper taking shots at American officers, resulting in infantry forces pulling back and raising many of the structures in the city to the ground through a mix of artillery and air support. In the town, the battle is done, much of the city is in ruin, but the stars and straps are flying high over the city center. Mark a victory against the Legion of Navajo. The city's ours. Baltic. Still banned free press if we really wanted to. Further store NALF San Clemente Island. A naval auxiliary landing off the California coast. We're a bit short on developing new command and control nodes for aircraft, and its location makes it prime territory to patrol the American approach. Dealing with Eureka, we'll get there eventually. Sure. We have harbors. While the answer I could get away with setting up shop at any pier, our navy needs to have control over its bases to provide safe harbor to its fleet. Where freedom flies. Just as important as our army, our air force must be ready, resilient, uh, ooh, look at that. and ensure the greed won't destroy its integrity. Return of fixed wings. While tilt rotor aircraft have been remaining stay since we returned, fixed aircraft, fixed wing aircraft will pick up the slack where the expensive and delicate vertebrates would be too costly to send. Air Industry Command, overseeing aircraft design, development, construction, and deployment, subject to heavy oversight to ensure that the taxpayers' money is spent on what is needed and not lining pockets, are our workhorse. The backbone of our Air Force, and key to our return to the mainland, however, they're expensive and sometimes unreliable, and perhaps it's time to see if we can fix that. <coughs> I dedicate the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court in the land is the highest court in the land, and while law can be malleable, where the, uh, where the Supreme Court sits cannot. This will be far easier than trying to set up law and order in the post war wasteland of America. We're forging the arsenal. We'll do that anyways, because we can. Um, now that America has returned uh, to its own shores and once again, uh, the army is more than ready ever to shed the single production lines of the rig and return to the powerhouse that it was pre-war. Constrained by, uh, constrained within reason, of course, the army has come forward with plans to revitalize the procurement uh, of new... Uh, procurement industry as well as expanded production lines in-house. The proposals are Army Procurement Command, while traditionally developed new equipment for the Army, it's instead aimed to restoring what was once was. Another is the restoration of the Army arsenal across the United States, turning many of our old installations into outright factory complexes of their own. The development of these new facilities will of course be overseen by the Army Corps of Engineers, who are ready to begin work on restoring America's old factories. Oh, we can just use which one, it doesn't really matter. Just go ahead and grab Corps of Engineers. Automated factories. Cut costs and maintain standards. Military factories will be automated labor, overseen and maintained by Army officials. Defense Board oversight. Audits, surprise inspections, and detailed reports. Factories will be reminded that they're there for the defense of the nation and not their own goals. Congressional oversight. Now we'll talk about that. Oh god, it's going to crash my game. So if it does, I apologize. Um, and if it, uh, I might as well just end the episode here since it's going to crash really hard, probably. So. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue to see what we can do with the Enclave. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.